My name is Tom Bernacki, and I'm getting this mic up closer to my face, but here's what I'm going to show you is to avoid the situation my patients get into. Cause what they do is they come in, they want to talk about shoes, but when I'm like, Hey, there's shoes right here. There's orthotics right here. I see them getting nervous. They're already going on Amazon. They're already researching shoe sizes, but when they come in, their shoes don't fit properly. They're too big or they're too little. Then they waste numerous trips. They can't get the right inserts. They can't get the right braces. My job is not that I want to cost you an extra 10 bucks, but I want you to be able to order these properly online and make sure your shoe size is fitting. So that's what this guide is about. It's about getting your shoes to fit properly. So as you can see right here, I drew my own foot on an Amazon cardboard box and I got the shoe size written down right here. And that's what you're going to be able to do at home and make sure it works. I'm going to tell you what works and what doesn't work. So the real keys to getting a shoe to fit properly are number one, make sure you get fitted later in the day. Don't get fitted in the morning because the average American shoe size can go up a half a size to a full size at the end of the day. These are mistakes that people do make at home is they don't wear socks. They don't wear the inserts that they're going to wear. You want to use a finger length between your big toe and a finger length between the size of your foot to make up for that because you're going to be wearing socks. You're going to be wearing inserts. There's going to be stuff inside your shoe. So you're going to go up about half a shoe size to a shoe size plus swelling throughout the day. You're going to go up about a size or half a shoe size. It's a lot easier to get a slightly bigger shoe and make up for it with an insert or a bigger sock or some padding than it is to have to send back a smaller shoe. So always err on the side of being larger. So the equipment you need is a piece of cardboard, especially if your shoe size is over 11 inches because white paper is only up to 11 inches. If you're a lady or you have a smaller foot under 11 inches, then you can use a regular piece of paper. You want to be on hard ground. You don't want to do this on carpet or something soft. You want something firm that will support your foot properly. So let's get right to it. So. One thing that happens is I realized that as I take my piece of paper right here, it's going to be too big for my foot. So a lot of people will run into this. I'm about a size 11, 12. So once you start crossing past that, you probably need more than an 11, eight, an eight by 11 piece of paper. So I grabbed a piece of cardboard. I'm sure you order stuff off Amazon if you're getting shoes there anyway. So grab this for your foot. So I'm going to do it right here. Here's the real key is you don't want to just place your foot like this and lean back. As I put all my weight onto it, my foot takes up a little bit more room. So with all my weight on it, that's how I'm going to draw. So at the very least, just lean a lot of weight on it. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm drawing everything out right here. The real key is to keep your pen vertical not sideways. So as I'm coming up here, because if you tilt it in, your foot's going to look a whole lot smaller. If you try and hug exactly where your skin touches the ground, it's really how wide it is at its highest portion. So see that right there? I drew my foot. You can see that foot pretty nicely there. That's a pretty weird looking foot. I got the longer toe. Uh, some people have the longer second toe. So here's what you want to do is you want to add finger length or let's say thumb length to the top. So I'm going to add a little bit right there. And you probably want to add a thumb length to the side right here just to be safe because you can always fill up your shoe later and with an insert or a thicker sock, but you can't make it smaller. So grabbing a little bit there, maybe not quite as much over here. And again, there's no shoe police for people. So manufacturers, they make shoes a little bit different anyway. So see, just add a finger length to the tip of the big toe or your longest toe or to the side. So right here to right here, we're going to draw a straight line across. We're just eyeballing and same thing kind of right here to right here. 
and then to the inside. So you want to measure roughly in this area right here. So I have my fancy tape measure right here. So we're going to measure from the end to the end. So right there, I've had about 12 feet, but I've added a lot with the finger at the tip right there. So let's say 11 and three quarters. And then right here, I'm gonna say, it says five inches, but it's really closer to about four and three quarters. So we're in America, so I'm doing most of this videos for US measurements, so we're using inches. But if you're in Europe, use centimeters. You know, measure it that way. Whichever country you're from, use it that way. So, as you can see right there, I added a little bit to the big toe. I added a little bit to the fist, uh, the fist toe bump right there, the Taylor's bunion bump. And what you want to do is, you want to measure it when your foot's most swollen. You want to put weight, your body weight on it. And you want to make sure you add a little bit to the tip of the great toe and the fifth toe. And you want to make sure your pen's vertical when you're drawing it and you're on a hard, flat surface. So we just went over how to draw our foot. So here's what mine looks like right there. So I measured an 11 and three quarters. I rounded it up to about a 12 inch foot and I measured the width there. So the next thing you do is you print out the size chart. So go on Google, see what the width is like, see what the length is like. So we measured our numbers, but now, uh, so I had about 11 inches. So right here, you could see at about 11 inches, I'm between about a size 11 and 11 and a half. So in women's sizes, I would be off the chart right here. So a good rule of thumb is for women, you want to measure about a half size smaller. And then I went a little bit bigger. So you want to, for your width, especially for men's, you want to check what your shoe size is. So as about 11 and I was close to up here. So I over measured a little bit. I would say probably between a medium and a wide. I was about four and a half inches on my measurements right here. So I would comfortably go with an 11, double E, or even a D. So one overrated aspect is people think they need a super wide shoe. As I'm going to talk about later, it's really that you're twisting out too much in your leg. With a good insert, you shouldn't need an extra triple wide E for most people. So again, take your length from your heel to your toe, as you can see right here, and measure it that way. So I came in to be about an 11, 11 and a half. And for my width, I line up the 11, 11 and a half. And I measure, you know, probably like a double E for my foot. So it's a nice sized foot. For women's, you have your woman chart here, and then you have your men's chart up here. So Google how to fit my shoe size, and you'll have charts like this just with the width and using the numbers you measured. So when people get so tight through their hamstrings or their hip, their foot flattens out a lot. So the more your foot twists out sideways, so for example, if you ever saw like a 90 year old walk with their feet turned out all the way, that's your feet sliding around. It doesn't mean your foot's actually wider. This means that you're tight through your hamstrings, your hips and your knees and your feet want to twist out and you're going to be hitting up against the side of your shoe. This is a common mistake. It's not because you have a gigantic foot, which they never make wide enough sizes in. People know that I notice with a lot of patients, if you give them an orthotic that prevents that sliding outward. So when your foot's twisting out, suddenly their foot's a lot more narrow. So the higher arch a person is, the more narrow their foot is, the more flat footed somebody is, the more wide their foot is. But this method works all the time. Measure your foot. This is no different than that metal machine they use at the stores, but here are tips. Measure when your foot is most swollen. Always add a fingertip to the end and to the side to make up for your inserts and to make up for thick socks. If you plan on wearing thick socks and inserts always go up a, at least a size overall, because you're going to notice it's going to measure a lot smaller than you're regularly used to. That is the trick. 
And lastly, nobody polices the shoe companies. Somebody's size nine is somebody's size 11. There's no way to perfectly make up for that. That's something you're going to have to trust the shoe companies for. Better shoe companies uh, that are more reputable tend to follow the guidelines more. Dress shoes or high heel shoes never follow this rule. So especially for the ladies, you're going to be in tough shape ordering nice fancy shoes online. That's why you probably want to fit them in person first and see how that works. So this is Tom Bernacki. This way works. Uh, give me your complaints in the comment section about how I wasted your money online. But that's the tips. Always go a little bit bigger and read the show notes below. It's going to tell you how to make a bigger shoe fit smaller and hit the subscribe button. We're busting our butt trying to get you great videos. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, get some notifications. We're going to keep great videos coming for you.